Well, hello, hello, hello. How are you guys? Um, so, my name is Mitchell Osborne. You can find me at MitchellOsborne.com. And this is um, a live, um, just an energy update. I've been doing a little bit more of these um, since, um, you know, I'm kind of working remotely. My responsibilities are just a little bit all over the place from my, my, my day job, my full-time career in fitness. But uh, so, yeah, so you might be watching this in the archive on my YouTube channel or later on Facebook. But right now, hey, Linda, right now I am live. It is 1021 Eastern Daylight Savings Time or Eastern Standard Time, Orlando, Florida time um, on April the 1st, 2020. And I do not do April Fool's jokes at all um, <clears throat> because I... I'm the kind of person that when you do one, I don't just, if you do one here, I don't just go here. I go all the way as high as I can so it will stop. And um, I did a really bad one on my mom a gazillion of years ago. And from that day forward, I don't do them. <laughs> I don't do them. Um, anyway, so I am just going to give a little bit of an energy update and kind of talk about why I'm doing that. So let me, first of all, I want to share this. If you want to share this on your page, wonderful. I'm going to share it as well to my page. Um, and I think, let's see, watch party together with friends. So I think we can start a watch party, or I guess so. Um, we'll figure out. So my watch party has begun, I guess. Um, <laughs> so hey, everybody. Once again, Mitchell Osborne here. You can find me at MitchellOsborne.com. I'm a psychic and medium, and I use those abilities, um, reading tarot cards, connecting with those crossed over. I do animal communication. I also do a lot of mindfulness meditation coaching, which involves eye movement therapy, EMT, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, EFT, Tapping, um, as well as Hypnosis and Hypnotherapy. But um, I, I have a cool story. So a friend of mine, um, friend and client, she messaged me yesterday and she's like, um, hey, Mary. And she was like, uh, she said something about, you know, what? why didn't a lot of like psychic and mediums, you know, see this coming? And, and I said, first of all, I, I don't know that they didn't. Um, and she's like, she's like, did I see it coming? And I, and I didn't. And my response was that I typically work in like the here and now with clients. What's going on today? What's going on tomorrow? Um, what can you, you know, what can you do in the immediate moment? That's just kind of always been my thing. There years ago, I, I did a, a little bit of venturing out and, you know, you know, predicting, you know, like royal weddings or babies or things and stuff like that. And part of it is because of the prediction aspect of it. Cause I believe, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of predicting in the sense of especially bigger global things. And even if I do predict with a client, a lot of times I say, if you like that, hold on to that. But there actually could be something better. If you don't like that, you know, you can change it. You're in charge of your past. So, so putting things into speaking them into existence, sometimes we're missing something even greater and better. Um, but uh, we certainly could have seen the potential of what's going on right now. And what's going on right now with, you know, coronavirus, COVID-19, you know, it has the potential of going really big and crazy or curtailing just depends on, you know, where we go as a society. But so this friend messaged me and then a couple hours later, I was watching Lee Harris's um, updated video and I kind of shared that and I was like, oh man, I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to be doing this. And one of my one of my kind of guides that I work with, it's the first time I ever felt her, and she shows herself as a feminine. Her she's always been very stoic and angelic and straightforward, like a you know, like a school teacher. She got excited and I was like, oh man, am I supposed to be doing a little bit more of this? So I do feel and have felt I was called to be a little bit more of that. And, you know, and I, and I do realize people, cause I just had somebody else ask me, you know, so what do you think about all this? And I'm like, you know what, let me do a video. Cause I've already done a few and talked about it, but here's what. And as I was walking around the lake, I literally wrote down all of this stuff. So I receive information usually when I'm listening to other people's things and they'll say one keyword, like I was listening to Lee Harris's and he said something about, you know, when you get stressed, do whatever, take a breath. And you know, as a mindfulness coach, I get what he's saying, but I was like, what, what is it about the breath? And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I wrote down like day, week, month, year, decade. Hey, Ruth. So day, week, month, year, decade, and I love structure as a, as a water person. You know, I've talked about this the other day. 
we water people, we like our structures because it holds us in place. <laughs> and I'm a pretty water, you know, and we like the path that we continue on. So there's more information about that. So, so here's what through connection with my guides, um, and uh, I'm not going to talk about them individually. It's more of a group right now, but there are 12, and it's like 12 at a table, and I actually hold one of those places. So I'm number nine. I don't. It's. Go, I'll have to explain that one day if, if I continue down this road. So. One of the big messages, hey, Kimberly, one of the big messages that they were saying to me is savor things. So right now, and I've noticed this a lot in myself, you know, while you're on lockdown, while you're working from home, whatever your situation is, really savor the things that you can. Um, if you notice yourself not not rushing, like this morning, you know, a lot of times, you um, Yes, Kimberly. <laughs> she's a cancer, so she's a water sign as well. So this morning, and here, and I love to tell stories to teach the lesson. So this morning, I was getting ready, and I was I started putting my shoes on and tying my laces up to go walk around my lake. And normally, I'm doing it, you know, and I've got things to do, and I'm like, I'm in a hurry, and I start like tying my shoes, and I took a breath, and I went, Wait a minute, I really don't have a schedule today. I've got some things to do, and they're not like on a time frame. So I took a breath and I just <laughs> savored tying my shoes. And as I'm saying that right now, I'm thinking back to, I don't remember exactly when I was taught how to do it, but I remember being in like school and learning how to tie my shoes. And it was one of those things I've watched children try to do it. And it's not easy when you first learn how to tie a shoe. So, hey, Angela. So, I, it was really cool that I took a time to tie my shoes and it took me back to being a kid with paper cutouts of shoes with laces in them and learning because bending over and tying the shoes can be kind of a challenge. But if it's up in front of you, plus not every kid had shoes with laces to tie. So they were being politically correct or, or giving kids all an option. So savor the things was one big mesh in that message that came through from my guides today. Now, the animals have been talking a lot and the I literally was walking 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 and all of a sudden I look across the street over the canal and there's a, a duck and it's a muskegee duck a muskegee muskogee I can't remember they're the one with all the stuff on their face and I just looked at him and it was like it was like a creeper <laughs> it was like he was just staring at me and I was like oh okay and immediately I got the message of I'm just watching out for you I'm just watching out for you. And I keep walking. And I live in Florida, so there are a lot of ducks. But it was the way they showed themselves. And I'm walking, walking, walking. And all of a sudden, I look back over my shoulder because I'm being drawn this way. And I look up on top of a house. And I had to pass the roof to see it. And there's a mallard just staring at me like this, looking at me. And as I walked a little bit more, I could see. And that was a male mallard. As I walked a little bit more down beside me, there were Muscovy. That's it. Um, and as I looked down, there were two a female mallard sitting there and I was like oh you're watching out for them and I look back at him he's like no 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 I'm watching out for you so there's this overwhelming watching out for me and then I get halfway around the lake and on the sidewalk there's a mama with probably like three week old babies because they're a little bit larger they're they're probably about this big um like nine or ten of them and I pause and I walk down onto the street and I literally was within five feet of them they didn't flinch. They just kept eating. So, um, and Angela, Angela said you had one three weeks ago on your back porch. You couldn't, and it wouldn't leave. Beautiful. So here's what the duck message is, because this is part of it. They're showing me how the animals are really stepping up for us right now. And the simple duck message is this. Know that you can overcome the obstacle you are currently facing by using your intuition, ingenuity, and emotional detachment in your decision. And I'm thinking... That's one thing I've been preaching is about like, you know, a little less emotions through all of this, but trusting your intuition through all the stuff that's going on. Because, you know, my husband and I, we literally got on a cruise ship on March 11th and on March 15th, they kicked us off. I mean, you know, I kept, everything I kept feeling was go, go, go. Now we got, we're going to get a full refund and a free cruise. So you know what? It wasn't a bad thing. But then when I came back to work, because I got off a cruise ship, I was I had to self-quarantine for 14 days, which put me back at work the exact same time that I was going to go back after the cruise. And, you know, it's been a really powerful time, you know, not being there. And I to be to be honest, too, I missed a lot of the craziness that was going on. If I'd come right back and gone back to work, I would have been involved with a lot of closing the, the, the facility down and, and a lot of other stuff. You know, not that I missed it, but I've always felt like, 
when I, there have been a few times I've gone on vacation and missed some powerful changes. And people are always like, don't go on vacation because something's going to happen here. So it's like spirit protects me. So I trusted my in intuition. Now, here's a little more lengthy uh, reading from that, but I really wanted to read what they said. In this case, duck symbolism is reminding you to take notice of your surroundings because there is a new opportunity available to you. Moreover, this bird also is letting you know that to succeed, you'll have to move forward swiftly. Therefore, your new ideas can take flight. I'm think, As I'm walking, I'm thinking about doing this. In other words, the opportunity will not wait for you, similar to the antelope meaning. <laughs> the duck symbolizing symbolism is making it very clear that, that to be successful with your goals, you need to move now. So I knew I needed to move right now with this and just speak about this. Um, and some of the other things that I've been getting from Spirit, and they reconfirmed I need to speak about this, is many of us <laughs> have been training for this moment. If you are a light worker, a, a light warrior, whatever you call yourself, you know, if you have elevated yourself, continue your enlightening path, you're, you're, you're a meditator, a yogi, a Reiki master, a healer of any sort, this is what you've been training for because the image I kept getting, and it got real specific with one of my um, friends and another person that does this work. I, and I don't know what the, like the battalion or the, where, like where the, where the people of the armed forces train, but it's like, this is, we've been in our boot camp, We've been in the fort training. The gates have opened. It's time for us to go out. And once we leave, we're not studying, we're not practicing, we're not rehearsing anymore. We're doing. You're not on the battlefield opening up a book, learning how to do something. You've already learned how to do it. Now it's time to get out there and put it to practice. So that's the other thing. Many of us, Shantae, yes, Shantae. <laughs> You guys, if you don't know Shantae McElvin, oh my gosh, a beautiful eye worker. Shantae, put your website or something up there. I want people to connect with you. She knows what I'm talking about right now. It's time to put the books down. It's time to put the, the lessons and the learning down and go out. It's, this is what we've been training for right here, right now. And that was a big, I cold chills all over my body. That was a big message from, from those, on, from my guides. Another thing was, I was telling you earlier, I said, you know, when I was uh, listening to Lee Harris and check out his, um, you know, monthly forecast and things like that, um, he's talking about the breath, the breath. And I'm, you know, I'm a mindfulness meditator and, and I teach it and train people and, you know, and I get the breath. But I was like, why the breath? And then it hit me because one of my messages I've been getting from spirit is we need to be in our bodies right now because we are human. We don't need to get out of it. Some of us need to come down in the body a little bit more. Some of us need to come out of the body a little bit more. It depends on where you are. If you've been preparing for this moment, you might need to come down into your body a little bit. <laughs> if you are, you know, a little more asleep, you know, not awake, you might need to get up out of your body a little bit more. It just depends where, where you are, you know, and you'll know it because it's like, I need to, I need to reach more higher. Or I need to come down. But the breath acknowledges that you're human. The moment you start, this is their message. The breath acknowledges you're a human. You know, we're a spiritual being having a human experience. Most of us have heard that saying. When we cease to breathe, we cease to be human. So our breath is the, ex every, every breath is our, oh, very emotional right now. Every breath is our acceptance, our reconfirmation, our restating and manifesting that we are in human form right now. And this is something that we thank you, Shantae. Yes, definitely check her 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 stuff out. Um, and I'm pronouncing it right, aren't I, Shantae, or is it Shanto? I'm looking at it now, thinking, am, am I pronouncing it right? I'm up in my head. <laughs> but every breath is that acceptance that we're human, that acknowledging that we're human. You know that that recommitment that we're going to stay in this body, in this form, in this form, and continue moving. So another person wrote me, and these are all messages from my guides, because as I'm going through it, preparing for this, they're just saying, here's all the information we want you to share. Um, somebody wrote, uh, I think it was in a, one of my lives the other day, they said, I feel like I'm being forced to be mindful without actually practicing. And I was like, oh, that's beautiful. And Spirit reminded me of that. Many of us, we are put into mindfulness situations and almost being forced to be mindful without having to turn the phone off, dim the lights, get quiet, get by ourselves, because 
That's kind of where a lot of us are right now. We're by ourselves or we're in that quiet space at home, you know, socially distancing ourselves, you know, and so we're, it's almost like it's a forced mindfulness. Now you cannot do that because I will find myself with my coffee, chilling out, reading, looking out the window, just being like nervously wanting to grab my phone and look at stuff. And that's those old patterns that I, you know, I will put my phone face down. It's always on silent. I just don't have the buzzer on which is just something I've chosen to. So now I did, like I said, I don't know if, I don't know why spirit told me this. My team told me this, but day, week, month, year, decade. And, I, and they said, be flexible, Mitchell. Don't feel like you have to <laughs> feel like you always have to have a day, a week, a month, a year, and a decade message. But here's what I got for the day. Day, meaning like, what do you do today? Create as much normalcy as you can, but allow for those small changes to take place. Allow for new patterns to emerge and, and happen. And this is, when I was listening to Lee's, this is what the message came through. Something he was saying, really recognize it. Um, this is the ancient practice vision quest. Ah, oh, beautiful. Um, so yes, so notice the patterns because right now, create as much normalcy as you can. By that, I mean like, I wake up, I bring my coffee to my husband, I go meditate, I do exercise, I come to my computer, I check some emails, I have lunch, I maybe have my, my usually afternoon coffee time, um, maybe I'll take a nap if I feel like it, uh, my husband comes home, we have dinner, we watch TV, you know, so it's like that. that's kind of normal. Now, what my normal day is filled with a lot more work and stuff like that, but create that normalcy, but I'm noticing the patterns that are shifting. Like, like putting my phone down, um, like not wanting, I, I take a book with me when I go sit, but it's like, I don't want to read. I'm listening to more podcasts. I'm listening to more videos like Lee Harris and stuff like that, which is not my normal thing. Um, you know, I like to read more than anything else. I like the words. So I'm noticing the small patterns and changes and shifts that are happening because they might become the new normal. And this is for people who like gentle changes. <laughs> so um, I didn't have a week, like what to do for the week. We'll see. Now for the month, this was very clear. Find your grounding. Find your grounding for this month. This is April. This is four months in a four year Four is is all about grounding. It's practical. Um, it's formation. I'm I'm gonna pull up so I can get the exact number number. Bounding, grounding, uh, building, formation, hard work, endurance, serious practicalness. That's what the number four is. So it's a four month and a four year. So it, the entire year carries that, but this month carries it exceptionally well. It's like double double the grounding. Double the formation, double the hard works, double the seriousness, practicality. Um, you know, so so really utilize that with whatever you're doing in your life. Um, you know, so find that grounding, find your four corners, your four pillars. And then for the year, this was very clear to prepare for 2015. And I love that, I love alliteration, and spirit often drops alliteration in my head. Flow, fluidity and flexibility. So find your flow, be fluid, allow that flexibility. And this is this is for this year, you're preparing your for 2015 because that's a five year. And five is literally change, transition, progressive thinking, resourceful, freedom, versatility, promotion. So next year is going to be this pinnacle through the numerology where things are going to all shift and change. And And I don't think I don't think it's going to be as bad as this year. In other words, what we're going through right now, but it will definitely be a time of change then. So start to practice more going with the flow. Start to practice being more fluid. And right now we're being forced to do that. We're being forced to be flexible. So when this time is over and we get to go back to what life might be like again, normal, continue practicing the flow, the fluidity. You know, if all of a sudden you're back to normal, you're back to your job and they're like, hey, we want you to work from home for a while. That was so cool before. And you're like, no, I don't want to. Like, go, okay, you know what? Let me try it again. Find the flow, the flexibility. Now, this was interesting for the decade, <laughs> for the decade, meaning 2020 to 2030, reach out and hold hands. I don't know what else to say about that because that was the image for me to interpret that is like make the connection, support each other, 
Hold each other. Don't be afraid to hold someone's hand physically and energetically. And I feel like that is for this entire decade from 2020 to 2030. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out and hold people's hands energetically, mm -hmm. physically. Um, embrace that connection. Um, and again, it could be because Lee in one of his posts, I didn't hear it, but somebody echoed it to me, that for the next 10 years, we're going to see this kind of energy. We saw the fires in Australia. You know, now we're seeing this pandemic globally. You know, who knows? You know, one of my friends, I hate to put things out there, but she said, I could see something like a giant solar flare that blows and shuts down all global internet or as it rotates, it shuts down when it's closest to the sun. Something crazy like that, which would be extremely wild, you know, but again, it's going with the flow, you know, being flexible, um, you know, understanding that and letting new patterns emerge and don't be afraid to reach out and hold each other's hands because there may be moments where we're going to have to literally help each other down the road kind of a thing. Um, energetically and literally. So so that's pretty much all I had for now. I just wanted this to be kind of short and sweet. It's about 21 minutes, so that's not too bad. But uh, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for retweeting. Um, thanks for posting what makes sense to you, you know, what resonates with you. By you, you know, connecting and, and letting know what's been happening with you and resonating is going to add, um, you know, strength, especially to the positiveness of this. Um, and like I said, you guys check out um, soulcareu.com and Shantae McElvin's business page. Um, hey, Martin Jones and you guys, Martin Jones, um, if you're in the UK, but anywhere, check out Martin. Post your, your website or your stuff as well. I love, you know me, I love connecting people. Martin is a psychic medium, but has so much else more to offer. Um, glad you're catching the broadcast. So you guys, if you're coming in late, definitely go back to the beginning because I, I put out about 10 or 12 points for my guide team, which I think it might become something new. This may become up my Saturday mornings once the new normal happens. I'm letting these patterns emerge just like I'm echoing them to you. Um, but anyway, yeah. So thank you guys. Thanks for being there. Thanks for sharing, retweeting, posting, subscribing, checking out you know my, my, my page right here, MitchellOsborne.com. Right now through the end of this month, at least for now, um, I've got 20 plus spreads that I'm doing 20% off. They're tarot spreads that I deliver back in a YouTube video. If you want to check those out, see what's going on. There's a couple of them that really pertain. Harmony Alignment spread is a really good one right now. Um, the Bridge spread is a really good one. So yeah, so again, I've been, usually I say namaste, but now I'm saying namaste, healthy and safe. Until we chat again, bye you guys.